Well, what does it mean when y is a function of x? Well, what it means is that when you put your input in, your x value, you're only getting out one y value, okay? So you can see here, x is mapping to y. Now, in this case here, you can see when we're putting in a given x value, we're getting more than one output, more than one y value out. So what that tells us is that it's not a function. Now, you might have learned this uh, when you learned about the vertical line test. Say, for example, I have a graph that looks like this. Okay, you can see here if I go over to when x is 2 and I go up to the graph, I have a y value here as well as here. So for that given input of x equals 2, I'm actually getting two different y values and it's failing that vertical line test. So y is not a function of x. But you can think of it either, you know, like this mapping that I've drawn here, or you can graph it, or, you know, you can plug in some points and kind of test it out using the equation itself. So Another option as well is to solve for y if possible, you know, try to get that y value by itself, and you'll be able to identify whether there's uh, you know, more than one output for a given input. So let's go into some examples and you'll see how I, what I mean by this. So say for number one, y equals 3x plus one. Well, we know what y equals 3x plus one looks like, right? It's a y-intercept of one and it has a slope of three, so it's looking something like that approximately, right? So you can see it's passing that vertical line test, meaning for every x value, there's only one y value that it corresponds to on the graph. Another option is you can see like, you know, if I put in values for x, I can see that I'm only gonna get one output for y, okay? So we know that this is a function, so we're gonna say yes for this one. Okay, let's look at the next one, number two. Uh, y squared equals 64x. Now in this case, you can see this is y squared. We wanna solve just for y, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. Remember when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you actually get uh, two answers, right? Plus or minus, so this is plus or minus, Square root of 64 we know is eight, and we're left with the square root of x. We can't really simplify that. Now, let's analyze this a little bit. If I put in, let's say for example, x equals one, right? Square root of one is one, times eight is eight. But you see we're getting positive eight, and also negative eight, right? So for that one input, x equals one, we're getting an output of positive eight and negative eight. So that tells us that uh, y is not a function of x. The other thing we can do is we can graph this and we'll see that it fails that vertical line test. This is actually a parabola that's on its side like, like so, and so it's failing that vertical line test. Okay, let's look at number three. This one we've got 3x squared minus y equals two. So again, what we can do here is we can you know, test out some points, but what I like to do is I like to try to solve for y. I like to try to get that y by itself. So here we're gonna multiply everything by negative one just to solve for positive one y that's gonna be three x squared minus two, everything multiplied by negative one, right? Okay, that's our final equation, but if we know what this graph looks like, we can see it's a parabola, see that quadratic? And the minus two is just shifting it down to, whereas the three is like stretching it by, by three, so it's like making it a little bit narrower, so it's going up faster, it's a vertical stretch. But when we do that vertical line test, you can see that as we go across the graph, is it crossing at more than one point? No, so that means for every x value, there's only one y value. So that means that y is a function of x, and so this one is a function. So we're gonna write yes for this one, 